Ollie here, and this is my review of The Happiness Patrol, the second story of the 25th season of Classic Doctor Who, starring Sylvester McCoy as the 7th Doctor. The Happiness Patrol is the 153rd story overall. It's three parts long and is written by Graham Curry. So the plot of The Happiness Patrol is as follows. <clears throat> On the planet Terra Alpha, bright fluorescent lights and garnish candy strapped colours abound. The population constantly display happy smiles. There's no sadness on Terra Alpha. Anyone feeling remotely glum, glum disappears. Quickly, having heard disturbing rumours, the Doctor and Ace arrive to topple the regime overnight. But they aren't reckoned upon the varied punitive measures enforced by the colony leader, Helen A. There are many delicious ways to vanish from Terra Alpha. You can be hunted down by the omnipresent happiness patrol, or moored by Helen A's ravenous pet Fifi. But, it's, but an especially unlucky few might find themselves in the sweetie factory manned by Helen A's psychotic henchman, the Candyman. This time, happiness will prevail. So that is the plot of The Happiness Patrol. Happiness Patrol, I think, is a very good story. A bit of a tonal change from the previous one, but I do think that The Happiness Patrol manages to stand out as a unique story in the season, especially with the colours and, and the story having the the title Happiness in the title. So even though it is, it is a very, this on the surface, it does seem like a very bright story but beneath that it is actually quite dark and that darkness is a bit of a recurring theme in the rest of the Sylvester McCoy era. So I think the production was very well done and this story is actually from the Orleans studio and the sets looked, the sets looked quite good. I like the forum square which was basically where a vast majority of the story took place. It looked very much like a town square and I was impressed with how it was all done in the studio. But it did handle some aspects like the cart, the ch cart chasing scenes where they were going very slow. I think, I think they were trying to imagine as if it was, as if it was like a, supposed to be like some sort of high speed heat chase. But then obviously as it was filmed all in the studio, it looked very slow. And the Candyman's Kitchen is another set that looked really nice. As well as the sewers where where the other people, the, the, the little troll people lived on. Lived in. And I think other areas like Helen A's office looked quite interesting as well. The costuming was really good. Of course it was camp, but... This is eighties Doctor Who, so it's allowed. The Happiness Patrol looking like, looking like sinister drag queens, and the Candy Man looking like literal candy. Me and the rest of the and the rest of the other people in the story looked very great, except for characters like, the Sigmas, Trevor Sigma and Earl Sigma. And this story didn't really have a lot of, SFX used, which was quite interesting. But I like that the I like the aspect of mundane like uh, mundane aspects such as sweets being used to, kill people so to speak. The script was quite good, as was the direction by Chris Clough. And this, the plot was actually quite good as well, even though there's been some discussion on what the actual subject matter on the story is. But one common thing, thing that is mostly agreed upon is that Helen A is pretty much a parody of Helen Thatcher, the British PM at the time in this story aired, when it was very damn obvious as well. And some people have actually said that the Happiness Patrol, the story, not the actual Happiness Patrol themselves, if was a metaphor for gay rights, as if everyone substitutes the whole aspect of in this story for being sad or being like any being LGBTQ, then you're pretty much sent to die or get prosecuted, so to speak. And plus there were other there was a lot of imagery as well in regards to gay the gay rights theme, such as the TARDIS being painted pink by the Happiness Patrol because they thought that blue looked a bit sad, so they decided to paint the TARDIS in pink. And of course, the happiness control themselves looking like wearing very heavy makeup, of looking like drag queens. And Ace and Susie Q's friendship being a bit, having a more having a bit of a contact, having some, some gay context into it. But then I think some of it was actually removed because it did because of the BBC censors because there was some suggestive dialogue, but they had to remove remove that. And of course, at the end of the story, how Helen A's down for started with her and her husband Joseph C left with. Gilbert Ermich, and it does actually strengthen the story about being uh, being about gay rights. And of course, Article 28 was around at that time, so yeah, so it does make things quite interesting. And also, others have suggested that and this is another Doctor Who story that does real world politics, which was used to criticize both Margaret Thatcher, with, with who sh she's shown to be a very ignorant, ruthless leader, and she, and she called the people who are who seemed to be upset with her regime killjoys and had pretty much had them killed, so to speak. And obviously that's why the doctor needed to throw her out. And then this was very much how 
Thatcher was in when she ruled Britain, it was quite dystopian in the such in a way because because I think inflation was at an all time high and I think everything was just not very not very good. And I think I can compare this to a scene in The Crown. I think it was in season four of The Crown when when Thay Fagan actually broke into Buckingham Palace was was like talking to the Queen, how he was saying how talking about how how downtrodden in England is right now. Everything has gone to complete shit and then obviously the Queen wouldn't really try to understand that but then she didn't really know it what to do because she can't really do much of anything. It's all to do with the government themselves. So I think that's how the government so there was pretty much like that in the happiness patrol as well. And other and lastly I think the story can also be is an also is another aspect of it being a message about consumerism ruining society which caused the original inhabitants to go under the sewers because there were lots of people that were coming into Terra Alpha to colonize the planet. But other than that, what makes the Happiness Patrol work is that it has really good humour, uh, especially coming from Remembrance of the Dark that had very high tension. So there weren't that many deaths at all, very graphic deaths, so it was a nice change. Even though, yes, I did say that Happiness Patrol does have a bit of darkness in it, but it is still a very fun story to watch, in my opinion. And funnily enough, the BBC actually got sued by Bassett Sweets because the candy brand resembled them, their mascot, Bertie Bassett. And as a result of this, the BBC agreed not to have the candy man appear in future Doctor Who stories to avoid any further legal issues. And I think the Happiness Patrol had some very good moments, and they were quite memorable as well. And I think one scene that did stand out was when the Doctor pretty much had to talk himself out of getting shot by the snipers with our like sight of the bar, which kind of foreshadows how he unintentionally foreshadows his regeneration in the TV movie. And there was another scene, which is actually my favourite scene of the story, was when the Doctor and the Killjoys pretty much pretend to be happy in order to save Ace and Susie Q from the Happiness Patrol editions. And as a result of that, the Doctor twists the, the Happiness Patrol's logic when he... Because they were out to arrest him because he was meddling and and because of his virtue of happiness, they couldn't actually arrest him because he was happy and the only ones that weren't happy were the happiness patrol themselves, especially I think it was Priscilla P and unfortunately the happiness patrol had to arrest her and that was another funny scene. And the candy man is one of the reasons why the story is fairly memorable because he is literally made out of candy and I liked his demise when he was confronted by Ace the Doctor in his kitchen. And the ending was quite bittersweet, but the way it was done was actually quite clever. Helen A, she's pretty much, she pretty much has her downfall when her husband leaves the, leaves the planet of another man. And then and then she finds out that her pet, Digrax, Fifi, and was, got killed. And when she saw well, her pet's dead body, she just broke, she pretty much breaks down and... And yeah, that's how she, she she's defeated. It, and, and as a result of her defeat, everyone is allowed to express any emotion they feel like expressing on the planet, whether, whether it be happiness, sadness, whatever. So uh, the reason why I think it's clever, because you think that the evil would be, def- even though the evil was defeated, and you think that everyone would be happy and rejoiceful about it. I mean, there are, in, I mean, there were in a way, but then the story does end in a very intention with a, bit of a gloomy note as, as such actually even though they are quite happy that everyone has been defeated but at the same time you do have to think about all the other people that disappeared here because they were, un- were unhappy and now that everyone has and now that Helene has been defeated and those that aren't there to be sad aren't, aren't there so yeah it is a, it is quite clever to do and I think it was a very good job in doing that having enjoying, ending the story in that way and the acting I thought was quite good Sylvester McCoy was brilliant huh? brilliant. he's not as manipulative as he was here in other stories but, but the manipulation is pretty much reduced and he does go back to his goofy self a bit which is a bit disappointing but it does help with the plot and him wanting to get help to overthrow Helen A there was a scene that I mentioned before where he had to convince snipers not to shoot him which is a fairly serious moment, and I like how in part three where he showcases him his singing skills when the doctor decides to sing a bit of as time goes by, which is lured to which is used to lure the happiness patrol with Ace and Susie Q. 
But I thought it was the one scene that was quite cool was when he was on, the, when he was sighted looking slightly sad by Silas P, and the doctor got, got caught was very got caught well, but he was very close to from getting captured by the Happiness Patrol. But then, Silas not Silas P um um Earl Sigma saved him in the nick of time, and then, and that's how Silas P ended up getting captured by the Happiness Patrol by mistake. And I think the Doctor and Earl Sigma had some very good chemistry together. And of course, when he was showing an overt sign of happiness to save Ace and Suzy Q, he was, that was another good scene from the two of them. And I do like how they had like a very special handshake at the end of the story, which is another aspect of Doctor Who trying to move on with the times. But it was quite clever. And yeah, you can really tell that Sylvester McCoy really had a blast filming the story. Yeah, and I think he actually wanted the story to be filmed in black and white, but then the BBC didn't want want to do that, so they're lost. But I do think the story would have worked better in black and white, but then either way it still works regardless. Sophie Aldred was great as well. Ace is still a bit out of her element, but upon meeting the happiness patrol, she's immediately disgusted by them, especially with them persecuting persecuting people who are, who weren't happy, who even looked the a bit discontent. And that disgust grows when they arrest her, wanted to be in the happiness patrol, and they wanted to remove her dark clothing because, as we know, Ace wears this bomber jacket with pins on it. Fun fact I think Flower Child's earring actually appears in the filming of this story, even though she doesn't actually get it until The Greatest Show in the Galaxy. But I think this was due to, due to the filming orders being out of place. So, so yes, as I said before, Ace is someone who has a lot of traumas by. An, I assume this is how she wants to express that trauma, so to speak. But then having that removed, it is a bit of a security blanket for A. So that's why she was so dead, dead against wanting to take down the happiness patrol themselves. Oh, and I think another aspect of her, her showing how expo- how expressing her traumas of her nitro nine explosives and. So having all these taken away from her did not sit her well with Ace at all. There were some good moments that she had, especially when she yelled up the killjoys in part two. So Ace has, has, has another special friend of the week. Remembrance was Mark, and this story was Susie Q, or Susan Q. She was a happiness patrol trooper who was persecuted for freeing Ace as she shared her troubles with Helen A's role. But there were some indicators that implied that their friendship was a bit more, but these were, but the more obvious signs were removed by the B, were removed so they don't trigger the BBC. So that's it for the Doctor and Ace. They were brilliant, even though Ace was separated from the Doctor for a good chunk of the story, but it does allow Ace to develop a little bit. So I do like that, to be honest. To the side cast, they were all fairly good. So first off, we have Silas P. He was a secret agent working for the Happiness Patrol, and he was. His role was to look for any kill, suspected killjoys so they can be apprehended or so they can be either sentenced to death, sent to the Candyman, or auditioned for the Happiness Patrol. But he catches out Daphne S at the beginning of the story and he tries to catch out the Doctor but ends up getting knocked out by Earl Sigma, which naturally made him upset and that's how he ended up getting killed by this Happiness Patrol. And speaking of which, we have Earl Sigma. He was a medical student that ended up in Terra Alpha but... But then he was stranded stranded on the planet because his music was was considered too sad because his specialty was with the blues and especially with his harmonica, which he played all the time. And when he saved the doctor from Silas P. And there was a scene where he was uh, he was playing his harmonica, he was playing blues and harmonica and then when someone is going past then when someone sights him he quickly switches to happy music and gets one sticker slapped on him and that was a very interesting scene so to speak he helps the doctor in overthrowing helen a and her and happiness patrol and he decides to stay behind for a bit to teach everyone the blues again and then we have suzy q she was a trooper of the happiness patrol she arrested ace but later freed her when about when she shared her thoughts about the happiness patrol which ended up which ended up, ended up her getting arrested the two were sentenced to death, but the doctor saved them with a grandiose display of public happiness. As I said before, she was Ace's special friend of the week, and there were some signs that hinted hinted at them being more than just friends, but then they had to remove it because they didn't want the BBC moving down their necks. And we have DDK. She was a happiness patrol trooper, and she arrested the doctor and Ace for being killjoys at the start of the story, so... 
Her and Priscilla P gets arrested thanks to the doctor when they seem visibly annoyed when their attempts to arrest the doctor had failed because he was happy and they couldn't really do anything about it. And after Helena was overthrown, her and other her Priscilla P and other members of the Happiness Patrol were made prisoners. Then we have Rensis and Wolfric, two of the original habit inhabitants of the of Terra Alva. When human settlers started to arrive on the planet, they had to live in the sewers and they looked like alien little alien troll creatures. They were referred to as pipe people and Rent and Rensis was actually the one that saved Ace from the firing squad in I think it was part two. Then we have Joseph C. He was Helen A's husband. He was starting to get tired of his wife and he fled the planet of Gilbert M, which started her downfall. And there's Gilbert M. He worked on the candy kitchen alongside the candy man. He mentioned that he was a state scientist on another planet that worked and then he accidentally created a germ that ended up pretty much almost wiping half of the population, so that's how he fled to Terra Alpha, and he created the Candyman's body, and it somehow developed a mind of its own. So before I add in the story, he and Joseph C. leave Terra Alpha together. And then you have Trevor Sigma. He was an outside surveyor working for the Galactic Census, and he had to identify the people who had disappeared since the last census. And finally, we have Helen, well, Fifi, Helen A's pet Stigorax. And the Stigorax was a wolf dog like creature and was very loyal to her. She was used to hunt down pipe people as well as other killjoys as well. And she was actually sent down to hunt the Doctor and Ace, but she was fatally injured when some debris fell on her. Uh, and then when Helen A saw Fifi's carcass, she pretty much broke down. And fun fact, Chris Cloth actually provided the voice of Fifi. And those are our side characters. Our villains. First off, we have the Candyman. He was an android in the candy kitchen who was created by Gilbert M. The Candyman was quite insane and sadistic and even took pleasure in killing his victims. And he even says to the doctor at the end of part one, I liked my volunteers to die with a smile on their face. And despite being very deadly, he moved very slow. And I think this is probably due to the costume that the actor was wearing. But the Doctor was able to mobilize him with some lemonade. The Doctor and Ace went in part three, went to the candy kitchen for a final showdown with the candy man. But then he decided when the Doctor, when Ace were attacking him, he went to went to a pipe and he slid down. But then it had some of the, I think it had some of the, th I think it had the, the fondant surprise that he used to kill people with in the pipe. So that was put there by I think it was the pipe people. And whereas as soon as he, he slid down, it actually dissolved him. Um, so, and I thought the Candyman didn't really do much, but he was a very unique villain. And he had a very crazed smile on his face. And I like the, the, I like the creativity that went behind that went behind the making of the Candyman. I do think he is one of the more popular Doctor Who villains. Should he return in, in the new series? He probably, he probably won't, but then... But he does actually return in some big finished stories. And we have our big bad Helen A. She was the ruler of Terra Alpha and ruled with an iron fist with the use of the Happiness Patrol. She outlawed unhappiness and everyone had to be happy. Anyone that was sad had to be pretty much executed and she called them killjoys. Although it was revealed that this was all a bit of a facade the mask was started to slip, so starting to slip because she was... I think there was a part of her that did feel a bit sad herself but then... She pretty much had to keep up appearances and then it's the mask pretty much started slipping when her husband left with another man and then when she finds her pet and her pet dead she immediately breaks down into tears finally understanding the killjoy is wanting to be sad and then that's how she pretty much disappears after the end of the story she doesn't die or anything i thought that was a good idea she was a very cunning villain and when you look into things especially which and this is the the darkness element I was talking about of this story that what really makes the story a bit dark was because if you think about it there was mentioned that that the population of Terra Alpha had fallen had fallen by at least 17 percent according to Trevor Sigma's last survey and as a result I think because of this I think at least almost like half a million people ended up with dead as a result and I can see why they decided to base Helena off of Margaret Vancher, but then they decided to exaggerate her by making her a, <clears throat> a genocidal dictatress, which was quite interesting as well. So, so with with everything being so happy and jovial, then there's a bit of dark. There's a very there's a hidden bit of darkness if you just look into it, especially how many 
killjoys they were they were found to have killed. So on to the thoughts of the story. The pacing did seem quite uneven at times. It was easy to follow, but then the ending was a bit rushed, so to speak. It was I've I'd have at least seen the scene where Ace was in the happiness patrol editions and when the doctor would have swooped in to save her at the end of the day. Yeah. But then at the same time we wouldn't we wouldn't have gotten Sylvester McCoy's wonderful rendition of as time goes by. And one last thought was obviously the set itself. It looked even it looked quite stunning, but then but then it looked quite cramped and awkward, and they made the car chase scene just very slow and just very awkward. So to conclude this review, the Happiness Patrol shows the Doctor Who can do fun story with unique with unique imagery without having to go for the conventional dark stories to convey its subject matter. Even though this story does have quite some bit of darkness, but then. It was a good. There was a good balance of the of the happy of the lightheartedness and the seriousness. Yes. The Candyman being one of the unique villains of Doctor Who, especially the Sylvester McCoy era, actually does help the story become memorable. And I do give the Happiness Patrol a nine out of ten. So my next review will be the Silver Nemesis, the twenty fifth anniversary story of Doctor Who, which sees the Cybermen return. Turned for the to face off against the Doctor for well, the last time in the classic series, and more of the Cartmore Master Plan starts to unravel. So thanks for watching. Please let me know your thoughts of the Happiness Patrol Landers review. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Follow me on social media platforms and which is can be found in the description. And until then, I will see you later.